Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and we're taking a look at a studio figure this month, this time around. This time it is the studio version of Brawn from the Bumblebee movie. This figure was donated to me by a new subscriber, Selena Yang 760 donated this figure to the channel, so we thank you very, very much for this contribution. Although in reality, I probably should have saved him for later, since I'm starting to amass a few studio figures, but I did promise her that he would be up for review here at the end of April, so I will keep my promises. But at any rate, this is Brawn, is how he appeared in Bumblebee. Naturally, he didn't transform, so his alternate mode is going to be based off of some concept art, where they apparently intended for the Autobots to transform during the movie, but apparently, for whatever reason, that segment was scrapped. But at any rate, we'll get... Brawn here out of the way for a second so you can take a look at the background he included which shows off Cybertron in flames now, of course Brawn's also part of a new initiative by Hasbro to reduce less plastic to reduce the use of plastics on their toy packaging so he has a Similar setup here on the inside instead of a plastic tray. He has this cardboard tray that holds the figure and his accessories in place. Of course, now he's also one that still unfortunately has a plastic window, but a lot of these are also disappearing on the modern toys. But at any rate, let's get these out of the way. And we'll bring Brawn back in. Brawn, of course, here takes a lot of his appearance from the Generation 1 cartoon more than he does from his Generation 1 toy. As the head has a more helmeted like appearance, which is more akin to how he appeared in the 1984 animated cartoon. Braun's also one of the famous ones in that series, as he was the second strongest Transformer on Earth behind Optimus Prime. So, even for a guy that was a little tiny figure, he was plenty powerful. Bronze also famously remembered, though, from the 1986 animated film, as he was the first Autobot casualty to be depicted in the movie, being gunned down by Starscream and Megatron. At any rate here, let's take a look at this uh, version's accessories. And of course, this time around he comes with a gun. Comes with a nice big gun. But of course, a character like Brawn, who's big and strong, is always going to want a big gun. And of course, this hole here on the side, it also means that if you wish to display him without it, he can have it stored here on his backside. And unfortunately, it's a very small post, so... Okay, it is holding pretty good, but sometimes it will fall off very easily. So do bear that in mind if you do display him like that. When you have to occasionally go dust him. And then next up for his accessories is this bladed weapon. It's got three different prongs on it, so you could almost mistake it for a claw. And unfortunately, it does not open or anything, so... I'm just going to say it's a knife of some sort. 
Then yes, if anybody's wondering, it does have a hole on here as well, so if you wanted to, you could probably store it back here as well. But as you can see, you can only store one at a time. But there is a post on the top of the gun, and you can connect the blade on top like that, and I guess you can store both of them just like that. Yeah, I guess that isn't too horrendous. I've seen worse. Alrighty then, let's take a look at bronze articulation. Then he has about what would be standard for a studio figure. So his head can be turned from side to side, just not very well due to this shell. It's not really on a ball joint, but it is on a hinged plate, so it will shift down a bit. His arms can reach out to the side about so far. They do rotate at the shoulder all the way around. You can bend his arm at the elbow, almost 180 degrees. He does have a swivel at his shoulder, so he really doesn't technically have the G.I. Joe battle grip, but it does come pretty close. He can be twisted at his hip, so he does have some dance moves going there for him. You can spread leg, good bronze legs apart about so far, because the tires get in the way. He does have a thigh cut, so you can twist his legs. Right here, you can raise his leg at the hip 90 degrees, and you can bend his leg at the knee, well, just slightly more than 90. So all in all, pretty good posability, but about what you would expect from a studio figure. Okay, now we're going to transform Braun. And he's actually pretty simple to do. For starters, we're going to turn him around here to his back, and we're going to raise up the back piece. His head kind of came with it, but we're going to push that down out of the way. Because right now we need to get in here, and we got to fold out the front set of wheels. We're going to come back here and we're going to push his head back a little bit so we have some room to work. Because we've got to bring his arms out to the sides and then start to rotate them. Because we're going to bring his arms inside. And then once his arms are in... You can see on the windshield there, there's a couple of posts. And those should line up with this hole right here on his arm. So you'll want to line it up. You'll have to shift his elbows a bit so that they'll fit. It's a bit tricky getting the line up right, but... It should snap in. You should hear it snap. And bring in the other one. Clear the wheels. Like I said, once it's in the proper place, you should hear it snap and feel it give in. There we go. His arms are now attached. Then once we've done that, we turn him at the hip. So now we got him facing the other way. And unfortunately, we should have had the head down a little bit lower, so now we got to undo this. Get the head down in just a bit lower. And then reattach these. And 
There we go. So then at any rate, we're going to come down here to his feet. You spread the legs apart, like so. And you're going to turn him at the thigh so that his feet point at each other. Then we fold them out at the knee, like so. Then the orange parts of his feet fold downward, lock onto the legs. Then we sort of straighten them out, and you fold the entire body over. Now, there's holes here, right at the edge of his leg. They connect into these little protrusions here, right by the wheel. And then, of course, the posts that are protruding out here will connect into the wheels. So you get the protrusion in, and then you can connect the wheel. Provided you don't try to drop the toy in the process. Oops, wheel's trying to pop free on me here. Darn mushroom clips. That didn't connect, but we'll try the other one anyway. There's that. Snapped into the wheel. Snap it in there and into the wheel. And then there you have it. There's Bronze Cybertronian Truck Mode. Which looks kind of nifty. And, of course, he does have a way to attach his weapons. To get the weapons on, the first thing we got to do is come here to the front and shift this piece so that there's a hole protruding at the front. Then you can attach the knife in like that. And then, of course, there's a hole at the bottom of the gun. And you can just attach it on top. Like so. That uh, gives him a nice attack mode. And he does roll fairly decently on this table. So all in all, not a bad representation. It was nice to see Brawn and many of the other famed Generation 1 characters to appear in Bumblebee. And with the fact that we saw immediately that they all resembled their Generation 1 counterparts... That gave a lot of us G1 fans something to be excited for for Bumblebee. Hopefully, when Rise of the Beasts comes out next year, fans of both Generation 1 and Beast Wars will have reasons to rejoice about it. In the meantime, for this toy, it's pretty good for what it is. I mean, granted, I really wish that we would have seen their alternate modes on the big screen. But, beggars certainly can't be choosers. And if you're definitely a Brawn fan from the G1 era, this is a figure you might want to have. To see how the toy and the figure have evolved in looks over time. At any rate, that's my review of the studio version of Brawn. I hope you all enjoyed it. And remember, if you do like the kind of content that we showcase here on this channel, please do remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, next month we got coming up is the month of May. Which, of course, that is my birth month, but that's not till the end of it. But May's going to be a good month now. Originally, I didn't have anything planned for it. But as luck would have it, finally starting to see some legacy toys in the stores. I have a bunch, so we're going to do a Legacy Month. How much of Legacy? It's hard to say. At the time of this recording, I'm still short three figures. So, hopefully I can get them all. We'll just have to wait and see. At any rate, this is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.